Hey everybody, welcome to the Lunar Lowdown with me, Sally Nerney. This is the lowdown for the new moon of December 7th, where we have the sun and the moon together in the late degrees of Scorpio. We also have a couple of bonus planets who pretty much pulled all the focus for this moon. They are Neptune and Mars, exactly together on the day of this new moon. When I dropped in to find out what the star beings wanted shared for this new moon, immediately I was underwater. It was cold and it was uncomfortable and not my natural ecosystem. Luckily, I found out immediately that I could breathe. That worked out, that was good. I swam by some ridiculous images of those sea monkeys, you know the ones. And then I found myself approaching this beautiful underwater castle where Neptune, king of the sea, was holding court. And before him stood Mars, the warrior, the divine masculine implementer, doer and they were in deep conversation. So I swam on up and was basically eavesdropping, I guess. Um, and I heard them talking about finding the brilliant balance between their skills and what they bring. Both of these planets are in Aquarius right now, which is a constellation associated with humanity as a whole, associated with the growth of all of us, our evolution, our forward movement. And from my vantage point, I could hear how Neptune had many idealistic visions and dreams for the benefit of us all. And how Mars was basically taking notes as the implementer and the doer. This new moon offers a dreaming into how we each might be a part of the healing. I thought of this intention that I read recently from that guy who wrote that book, anyway, that he wakes up every day wondering whose life can he save today? A lofty ideal. And yet, rather than thinking, oh, that's not possible, why not let that kind of intention point our consciousness upwards towards the possibilities of how we can bring light into darkness? As I sat listening to Neptune and Mars, I realized that Mars is going to take this moment in time of this new moon and travel out through the zodiac for the next two years, implementing these dreams to the best of his ability, meeting with the hard reality of this realm. And I started to get blown away and my guides joined me because they could feel I was a little intimidated. I felt out of my depth. How overwhelming life is. How can I fix the problems that face us planetarily? How can I do something that's going to bring light into darkness? My guide said this, they do the work. You simply wait. The gods will turn towards you and give you your task when the time is right. In other words, our job this moon cycle is to listen through dreams, meditations, and the synchronicities of life. Listen for the opportunity to save a life. Right now, Mars is threading the needle that it will carry through the zodiac over the next two years bringing the messages and ideals of Neptune into the world. We, as active human beings, can align and assist with this mission. Assess your tools and strengths and look to Mars and Neptune in the night sky. So he'll be, well, he'll be actually, boop, boop, yeah. Look to the south to see the red dot of Mars communing with invisible Neptune. Neptune's too far away to see with the naked eye, but isn't that perfect? As invisible Neptune is stepping down this information, Mars bringing it denser where we can perceive it, and then we can bring it into our hearts to implement and to assist. These actions do matter. Your actions do matter. Keep going. 
like accumulating grains of sand on a beach. Your progress, while incremental, is immense and beautiful. And as a final image, the star beings offered that to watch the sun rise or set over water is helpful now. They said you could even watch it on a video. How about that? Get out there and get the real thing if you can. I am going to contemplate this beautiful setting sun over these sacred waters. Goodbye, beautiful sun. Day is done. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. You matter.